Okay, in this video we are going to talk about um, and review how to deal with error of Power or Taylor or Maclaurin series um, and how it might show up on the AP Calculus BC exam. Uh, so let's uh, take a look. There are two types of error that you have to be able to work with and they're alternating series error and the Lagrange error bound. Um, alternating series is more common on the released form of the exam, but they're kind of even overall which I know because since 2012 there's been a secure non-released form of the exam and Lagrange is on that quite a bit but they're unreleased so we're not going to be able to go over those um, but let's take a look at uh, what Lagrange does so here are some of the years that have Lagrange error bound on them uh, 2004, 2004 B, 2008, 2011 um, and there's a lot more on the secure exams alternating series uh, shows up frequently on the released exams uh, so 2006B, 2007, 2008B, 2010, 11B, 12, 16, 17, 18, just kind of all the time. So basically one or the other is going to be on the exam almost every year. Um, and that's just on the free response. They're also on the multiple choice. So it's a really important topic to make sure you really understand. Um, so let's see. What does it look like uh, when they're asking for the Lagrange error bound? Um, so. These are going to be uh, parts of the released exams uh, that ask for it. So, for example, uh, use Lagrange error bound to show this thing. Take a look at that absolute value. That kind of thing is going to show up quite a bit, and we'll talk about it uh, a little later. Uh, fourth derivative satisfies this weird inequality that you're given. Um, use Lagrange error bound. Um, let's see what else. Use Lagrange error bound to show this. Uh, you, you have a fourth degree Taylor polynomial, you know something about the fifth degree, uh, fifth derivative I should say, um, and then show there's that absolute value again. Um, so these are all things that, uh, that happen. So you can look at this and see that uh, they're going to actually tell you to use Lagrange, or if they don't specifically tell you to use the Lagrange error bound, uh, they're going to give you some weird random info about a derivative. So uh, like we know something about the fifth derivative, we know something about the fourth derivative, and um, anytime that happens, uh, that's gonna be when you use Lagrange. So uh, let's take a look at what alternating series error looks like. So uh, here are most, uh, maybe like all of the release questions they called for alternating series error. I just kind of like pulled out the questions. Uh, so we have Use the first three non-zero terms. What are the properties of the terms uh, that guarantee the approximation is within one over 10,000? That's a really common way to phrase it. So they'll ask for the properties, and then they'll give you something you have to be under. Um, explain why the estimate differs by less than. Uh, find a value of A. Uh, there's that absolute value again, keeps showing up. Um, and then here, they're saying that your uh, your polynomial is alternating with individual terms that decrease in absolute value to zero, and they want you to use the third degree polynomial to show that your error is less than something. Um, so when these sorts of things happen, uh, they're not explicitly telling you necessarily to use alternating series, um, but uh, they do give you a lot of information. Like sometimes they ask you to justify that it's convergent. Um, other times they tell you it's convergent, and you have to read the question, figure out what's going on, kind of go from there. Uh, let's see, so uh, alternating series is just on a lot, so I'm going to show you more of them. Uh, so here are a couple more, and you can see they're basically the same as the previous ones. And then uh, this one actually was kind of two parts, like in part C, yeah, you see that it's alternating, and then in part D, uh, they tell you to approximate it. And so those are more things that they have you do. And then uh, let's keep going. So here are two more parts that involved alternating series. And I basically just pulled out every question uh, that involved alternate, alternating series so you could take a look at it. And um, so when you're trying to figure out is it Lagrange or is it alternating, there's a really good chance they tell you it's alternating or Lagrange. Or if they don't and they tell you something about a derivative, it's Lagrange. Otherwise, it's going to be alternating. So I would say that uh, if they don't say to use Lagrange, and it doesn't tell you something about a random derivative, then it's probably alternating series error, uh, but that is definitely not guaranteed. I guess there are scenarios where that might not happen. So uh, let's talk about that absolute value that keeps showing up. So um, 
if, if f of x is our actual function and p of x is the polynomial, then uh, the following absolute value looking things like this, the absolute value of f of 1.2 minus p of 1.2 is less than 10, 1 over 10,000. Um, and you know it doesn't matter the order, so p of 1 half minus f of 1 half is less than or equal to that thing. Um, these are both ways of describing the error of an approximation, and you have to recognize that because it shows up in the questions. It's also a really good way uh, for us to write our justifications when we are asked to find the error. Um, so let's keep that in mind. So now we're going to dive into just what is the error, like how would you calculate it? So uh, alternating series error, we'll start with that one. So the error in approximating a convergent alternating series with its first n terms is the magnitude or absolute value of its n plus first term. So it's actually kind of the easier of the two to use. Um, so if you use the first three terms to approximate the value, uh, the absolute value of the fourth term is the maximum possible error. If you were to use five terms, then the absolute value of the sixth term would be the error. Um, and I always think that this is easier than Lagrange, so I kind of hope that the series I'm dealing with is alternating. Um, so let's talk about how we can go about justifying it. So first, we need to establish that the series is convergent, if you need to, um, which you might not, but maybe you do. Um, you need to figure out the first term that you left off. That's the maximum possible error. And uh, then I think when you write your answer, you should make use of that absolute value expression that we looked at. So uh, for example, here is what 2012 looked like. So this is the question um, and then the solution. So the question was, uh, your series is alternating with terms decrease in absolute value to zero, approximate g of one half using the first two non-zero terms or, or rather they did it for you and got 17 over 120, show that the approximation differs uh, from g of 1 half by less than 1 over 200. So here's what the scoring guidelines had for this. Um, and it looks like this. They use that absolute value thing um, and then they just look at the first term that was left off. Um, and there you go, that, that gets you everything. So here are the points you get for that. Use the third term as an error bound and then uh, get the error bound. I'm not really sure what they mean by that. I think maybe they mean you could have gotten the series wrong and still recognize that you needed the third term. I don't really know. Or maybe that you recognize it was less than one over 200, perhaps. Uh, it's a little unclear to me. Um, let's see uh, what it looked like in 2016 and 2017. So they both had um, alternating error questions. So uh, in 2016, this was the solution uh, in the guide. So the series alternates with terms that decrease in magnitude to zero. So that shows that it's convergent. And then they set up their absolute value thing. And then they looked at the absolute value of the first term left off. And then they showed it was less than what it needed to be less than. And then uh, in 2017, it's the same idea. They show that it's convergent. Um, and then they set up that absolute value thing. And they looked at the first term that was left off and show it's less than the required value. So pretty similar. Um, in 2018, they had the same kind of question, except you didn't need to show that it was convergent. So it was just all about the error. So this is what the solution looked like there. So they just say by alternating series error bound, upper bound for the absolute value of your estimate minus the actual value, magnitude of the next term. Um, and then they set it up and write it down. All right, so that's alternating series. Now let's take a look at Lagrange error. So here we go. So you may not remember it, um, hopefully you do, because hopefully you're reviewing for the AP exam. Um, if you use the nth derivative in constructing your Taylor or Maclaurin polynomial, then the error in using it to approximate the value of a function is given by, and I always think this looks like the first term left off, just like the alternating series, but it's a little more complicated. So it's m times the absolute value of a minus c to the m plus one, all over m plus one factorial. And so there's uh, a bunch of things in there. So C is the center of the series uh, where you evaluate the derivatives. And A is the value you're substituting into the series. So that's where you're evaluating the series. That's where you're approximating the function. And then M is the maximum of the absolute value of the N plus first derivative on the interval from A to C or C to A, whichever one makes more sense because uh, you, know, you need to go from smaller to bigger. 
And then remember, use the nth derivative to construct your polynomial, so that n plus 1, if you use the 10th derivative, n plus 1 would be 11. Um, so it's not super complicated, but there's kind of a lot going on there. And um, so I would say that m is by far the most stress-inducing part of this, um, but it's always somehow given to you because it needs to be, because you can't just come up with it on your own. Um, I mean, I guess you can, but it's easier to score if they just give it to you, so they do. So let's take a look at um, 2004b, the question. So uh, the fourth derivative satisfies this inequality, and then uh, use the Lagrange error bound to explain why blah, blah, blah. So if you look at it and you see that absolute value of the fourth derivative less than or equal to six, what they're doing right there is they're telling you that m in this problem should be six. So you're gonna use six for m, and you're just gonna dive in and uh, solve the problem. So that's why they give you those weird things. Uh, let's take a look at uh, 2011. So 2011, also you can find all these problems on the internet, they're all definitely available. Um, I'll try to link to them in the description, but they move them around frequently. So I'll put an accurate link right now, but who knows when you're watching this video. So here we go, this is 2011, I think. Um, so let P sub four, fourth degree Taylor polynomial, and then here's some weird information about the fifth derivative. And they actually gave you a graph for it. And this one was really interesting because uh, you need to look between uh, zero and one fourth. It's centered at zero, and then you're evaluating at one fourth. So you look at the graph between zero and one fourth. It's not really obvious what to use. So I ended up using 40 um, because it definitely has a maximum at one fourth. The maximum value of the absolute value of the derivative is at one fourth but it's not really clear what that value is. So I ended up using 40, which was okay, and it got us under one over 3,000, which is really the requirement. Um, so let's take a look at, uh, I'm just gonna show you the, the justifications that they use in their answer keys. Um, so this is from 2008. Uh, the fourth derivative of h is increasing on the interval from one to three, so the maximum on 1.9 to two. So this is like a notation that I think would be really good to uh, recognize and use maximum on 1.9 to 2 of the absolute value of the fourth derivative is whatever and then they use the absolute value expression uh, and they plug in so that's 2008 and here's 2011 you'll notice it looks almost exactly the same this is the one where the, that graph we just talked about so they ended up using 40 as well um, so you just find the value of them you substitute in you use proper notation it's a good deal um, so let's take a look at a few more. So what I did was I just wrote two more uh, because there aren't a lot of released exams. And so, uh, for example, here's our first scenario. Um, in each case, I'm just going to tell you the center, what you're going to approximate at, and how many derivatives you use to make the polynomial. So we have a center of two, we're approximating at x equals 1.8, and we use the third derivative for the polynomial. So I just made this up so I could demonstrate the notation. Um, so what I'm saying is, uh, the maximum on 1.8 to 2, so 1.8 and 2 are where you're approximating and the center, so that's where we need to look, of the fourth derivative. So we use the third derivative to make our polynomial, so we use the fourth derivative for the error, is 6. And then once you write that, um, if I had to uh, approximate the error, I would write down something that looks like this. P of 1 point, the absolute value of P of 1.8 minus F of 1.8, less than or equal to, I'm plugging in 6 for M, um, the absolute value of 1.8 minus 2, so where I'm approximating minus the center, to the fourth, I'm using 4 because I use three derivatives to write the polynomial, so 3 plus 1 is 4, and then over 4 factorial. And then I just wrote another one, uh, it's basically the same thing. So um, the center is negative 3, we're going to approximate at negative 2.9, we use the fifth derivative for the polynomial, which means we need to find the maximum of the absolute value of the sixth derivative somewhere between negative three and negative 2.9. So I would write that using this notation. I just made up that that value is 25. Um, and then if I were gonna substitute into kind of this template I've developed for how I'm gonna justify these, I wrote this. Um, the absolute value of f of negative 2.9 minus p of negative 2.9. So that's the actual value minus the estimated value um, is less than or equal to m is 25 absolute value of negative 2.9 minus negative 3 is plus 3 um, to the sixth because I use five derivatives to write the polynomial over 6 factorial. All right, so that's uh, kind of a lot of stuff. That's basically all there is to error on the exam. Um, so 
uh, I think you're in good shape if you followed along with this. So uh, knowing what to expect, I think, makes it a lot easier to deal with. I hope this was helpful, and good luck.